Hi, it's Teddy here. And today's video will be DSO of Nasi Pro Oscilloscope. I actually like the name, so big shout out to the manufacturer. And yeah, in today's video, I'll be showing you the probes that were designed for a proper oscilloscope. The massive probes, like this. Yeah, this is delivered in a Ziploc bag. This was the packaging for the oscilloscope delivered. It has no, it has a bubble wrap and it contains all these alligator B and C connectors which is pretty hard to actually connect and it only has one times attenuation so pretty hard to measure 800 volts. These oscilloscope probes can measure 10 times attenuation which means 800 volts for this oscilloscope. Alright, so you can see that it has two oscilloscope probes in the packaging which can be set to one times or ten times the attenuation for different voltage measurements and different sensitivity and this one is the different colored split ring so that it can actually identify which probe you are measuring and not mess things up like for example if you want to measure AC and DC you don't really want to mess those two voltages up because AC and DC they are different components this is called a Yonghu Shouter aka user's guide and it's a bilingual instruction and before taking any measurement using a probe you must first check the frequency combination of the probe it's quite well written it has all the specifications it has even some graphs voltage directing and input impedance nice the bandwidth can go up to one uh, sorry, 200 megahertz with a rise time of 1.75 nanoseconds which is quite cool you can pause the video to take a look at the instructions for more details and there are some split rings maker rings attaches itself to the probe cable to identify probes used in different channels oh huh, that's interesting so basically if i want to measure dc and ac i can say that for example maybe pink is AC and yellow is for example the DC so I, I know that oh I cannot connect this to AC I have to connect this to AC all right so let's just use one of the probes and let's connect the BNC connector to the probe like this and we are now going to measure a 1 kilohertz signal on the multimeter 1 kilohertz now we are going to calibrate the oscilloscope. I'm going to take out all the probes. Plug it in and now we are going to set the oscilloscope to 10 times attenuation as shown on the instruction. And we are going to connect the probes. Like this. You can see you have quite a lot of things. Well, you can see that the compensation is not that good. So we have to calibrate it using a adjustment screwdriver. And that's the best I can go to. So yeah. All right, so with the oscilloscope probes calibrated, it's now time for some real testing. Just do some fun tests, 2000 Hz, 3000, 4000, 5000, 6000. There's no 6000. It just goes back to 50. Let's turn off the multimeter and let's take it out. Oh yeah, by the way, what is a sawtooth? This is a sawtooth. It is basically used to measure, so it uses a sawtooth to measure the capacitance and the capacitance is 240 pico. Let's take out and let's get to the real deal. We are going to measure some alternating current voltage. It's like a sinusoidal wave but can exist as a square wave and many different types of form. Now let's measure the voltage for you using the multimeter set to voltage AC through RMS mode. Warning, let me take the chance to tell you that this circuit in the video uses mains AC 240 volts, which is extremely dangerous and should never be mishandled. If so, fatal injuries can occur. I strongly advise not to try this at home. And you can see we have yeah straight 240 volts ac with a frequency of around 50 hertz pretty nice and a duty of around 50 percent 
set it to 10 times attenuation beforehand because we don't want to fry our own oscilloscope. Now let's change it to 10 times, like I shown here, and we're going to change it to AC. Oh, sorry, AC like this, not DC. And we're going to increase the voltage per division to 200 volts and increase the time base per division to probably around uh, 20 or 50 milliseconds or somewhere between that. All right, be careful. We're going to connect the black one to the live, which is dangerous as, and my hands are already sweating because high voltage makes people nervous sometimes. Try to turn it on, make sure it's on AC, yeah, correct. And little did I know that I was about to make a horribly foolish mistake. Damn. To investigate this situation better, I used a digital multimeter, set it to continuity mode, and I'm going to test for the continuity by the buzzer. Okay, so I'm going to connect the negative of the oscilloscope probe to the negative of the multimeter probe, and the positive of the multimeter probe connected to the ground, which is the metal body of the BNC connector. I can see it features the almost exact same resistance as before. So this tells you that this wire is actually connected to here. What this implies is basically the high potential 240 volts AC sinusoidal voltage travels through the wire to the metal PNC connector through my hand, through my body to ground. So I'm acting like a low resistance path for the high potential 240 volts live voltage to travel to earth and hence a large current flows through me and I get electrocuted. So don't ever touch metals with exposed wires or any wires connected to it because it's quite dangerous. All right, there you go. We get a very nice sine wave, but you can see that it's quite bumpy at here. Do not touch here, this is dangerous. It's 675 volts peak to peak and a frequency of around 50 hertz. And let's see the voltage RMS peak to peak. RMS is 241 volts. UD is around 50%, which corresponds to that of the multimeter. So that's awesome. It's pretty dangerous to touch here because all the plugs are exposed live and my grab here is like, ah. This is actually the voltage coming from the live. So if it grabs you, the current can flow through your body, through the ground where you are stepping at the floor. So yeah, do not touch anything that's on the oscilloscope. That's metal. All right, <laughs> there you go. So you can see that it actually works. So yeah, AC. So basically the probes actually works. The one times and 10 times attenuation works. It's quite easy to get electrocuted just by touching this little innocent contact right here that doesn't really do much harm seemingly, but it may cause some harm. Hmm, now let me investigate the power supply, like for example, something of a power bank. Luckily this power bank is half dismantled, so I can just open it up. I open up this power bank so you don't have to do to your... So basically, I've partially disassembled the power bank. It works. You can see this is your fragile lithium polymer battery that can cause an explosion if you short circuit. We are going to protect the battery, we are not going to damage it. Now we are going to measure something from the microcontroller pin 8 of the IC. And you can see that, show something, be careful not to short the IC out. You can see we have a frequency of 440 hertz. So I'm going to go to 5 volts per division. So this is the original voltage of the battery, it's slightly under 5 volts, and that's the voltage output of the USB, which is 5 volts. So this is a power bank, it is it's charged, you can see that, it's charging, you can see all the red indicator here. Let's measure the output and let's take a look at the differences. You can see that it still outputs a constant 5 volt voltage on the regulator, so it must have something that regulates the voltage. Okay, so you can see it's still around 400 hertz. While well, the power bank is connected, let's test it out. You can see that it shows something like this. And if we take out the power bank from the charging, 
can see that's pretty much horizontal. But if we connect something like a 1M load, presumably it will show us a square wave like this. And this is what the regulator does to actually keep the fiber voltage. Or perhaps this inductor actually does the regulation. So thanks for watching today's video. I hope you like it. And remember to actually share the video and yeah, have fun with the oscilloscope. Don't play dangerous stuff like measuring high voltage. Thus, with that being said, I hope you liked the video and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye.